Hey, what's going on everyone? If you've noticed today, we're actually not outside. We're uh, in a studio, but not just any studio. We're at the studio at Precision Camera and Video in Austin, Texas. Now today's video is gonna be a how-to series and we're gonna be focused on the A10 Mini Pro, but we're gonna go over all of the A10 Mini series and just go over some of the key differences between each one and who we really see is fit for each level of the A10 Minis. So now we're gonna talk about all the three different A10 Minis. So to start off, we have our original A10 Mini. This is basically a capture card on steroids plus some. Um, we have four HDMI inputs. We have a HDMI out. We have our webcam out, which is USB-C, an ethernet port, and then power source. And on the far side, we have two mic inputs that are 3.5 millimeter. Where this really comes in handy, if you're trying to do live streaming uh, from like a home setup and you have a multicam setup, this is where this really comes in handy. This is going to turn all your HDMI feeds into one source on your computer. So, whereas if you ever tried to plug up a camera to your computer and you tried to, you know, go to Zoom or something like that, and it's just not recognizing it as a webcam. Well, this is changing all that. And like I said, you have four HDMI inputs. So if I put four different cameras into the HDMI, it's gonna recognize it as one webcam. And on the board, I'm actually able to switch. This also comes with a lot of features. You can do a chroma key on it, so you can actually set it up to do a green screen behind you. You have a Photoshop plugin to where I can put 20 different uh, designs on top of my stream. I have picture in picture, I have transitions I can program into it. So without getting too far into it, there's just a lot of stuff that goes into this ATM mini design. To get it all running, you're actually gonna have to download the software from Blackmagic on their website, which is their ATM software control. Now, the real nice thing about this is, first of all, the price point for this is very entry level. It's running 295 but the software I'm getting is the same software that they're using for their larger ATEMs that you see on uh, broadcasting or something like that. So you're getting a lot of features in this one um, for a really good entry point. Next on the list, we have our ATEM Mini Pro. Now this is gonna have all the same features that we're gonna have in our ATEM Mini, but it's going to have two key differences. The first key difference is we're actually gonna be able to live stream from the unit itself. The way you're gonna achieve this is if you have it plugged up into the ethernet cable, and then in the software, we're actually gonna be able to tell it where we want it to live stream to. The second key difference we have on the A10 Mini Pro is the ability to record externally to a USB flash disk, so something like a solid state drive. One thing to keep in mind if you do plan on recording this externally is that we only have one USB out input on here. So I have no way to actually have this uh, to be able to be hooked up to a computer and record externally. So you're gonna have to choose one or the other. Another thing that comes in handy for the HDMI output as well on the A10 Mini Pro is that if we don't have it hooked up to a computer, we're not actually able to see how our live stream's looking. So one thing that you are gonna wanna be able to do for most situations is plug up an HDMI source into your HDMI out and plug that up into a monitor of such. So as you can see today, we're actually gonna be using the Ninja 5 to monitor our live stream. Other than that, our chassis are the exact same, other than if you look at the top right, we have a few more buttons that are mainly for live streaming. Now, last but definitely not least, we have our A10 Mini Pro ISO. Now, I don't have a display version, but it's almost identical externally to our A10 Mini Pro. The main differences between the ISO and just the regular A10 Mini Pro is that our A10 Mini Pro, when it's recording externally, it's recording my live stream exactly how it happened. So I can do some editing on the back end, but not very much. Now with my A10 Mini Pro ISO, it's recording all four inputs. So when I'm done recording, I'm actually able to go back and change each transition that I wanted to or switch uh, cameras differently than how I did on my live stream if that's what I choose to do. Other than that, it's actually gonna create a DaVinci Resolve project file for me to actually go in and make these edits. So that's just a quick rundown of the differences between the A10 Mini series. What we're gonna get into now is the how to set up the A10 Mini Pro. And we're just gonna focus on the Pro version for this video. Now, before we get into it, I do just wanna make sure that we have all our essentials for live streaming. So, of course, to start off, we're gonna need our A10 Mini Pro unit. We're going to need the supplied power cable. Now. For our camera, we're going to be using the Sony ZV-1, just a small little compact camera. 
and you're gonna need the proper HDMI cable uh, source. So the A10 Mini Pro unit uses full HDMIs, but right now I'm going to have to use a, a micro HDMI on the ZV-1. I'm going to need a cable from USB-C to USB whatever connection we have on our computer. So for this one, I'm just gonna use a regular USB-A to USB-C connection. And for monitoring, we're actually going to be using a Atomos Ninja 5. So on our HDMI out, I have full HDMI to full HDMI on our Atomos Ninja 5. And to get all this started, you are going to have to download software and you can find this on Blackmagic Design's website. All right, so now that we have our software installed, we're gonna actually take a look at the ATEM software control. Right on the screen, you see that we have Cam 1, Cam 2, Cam 3, Cam 4. Um, but you see also we have a lot of grayed out options as well. Now, the nice thing about the ATEM Mini Series is that we're using the same software control that we're using on our full-fledged ATEM switchers. So if you're looking to get into broadcasting or just get familiar with something like that, then the ATEM Mini Series is a really good option to start off with. On our second screen, we have our media. Third one, we have our audio. Now this is used to actually uh, mix our audio while we're live streaming. And then we have our camera tab. Right now you can see that cam one is lit up, but we, it, we would also have it lit up on cam two, three, and four, depending on which inputs I had installed. So other than that, we're gonna go ahead and get set up with Zoom and show you how it's gonna work. So let me just open Zoom up. And there we are, we're streaming straight from our ZV-1 ready to go. I do wanna show you a comparison on how my laptop how the camera looks just straight out of it and why we would want to use something like an actual camera. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to built-in webcam. And there you have it. It is, well, it's terrible. If you are on any other software besides Zoom, it should be very similar. But if we go to the bottom and we actually click this tab where it shows video input, we're going to have our webcam by default but what we should be seeing is black magic design as a second option. And that's how you know that this is working properly and that your computer is reading it. So we're gonna click on that. Now we're back to our ZV-1. So that is the very basics that we have on the A10 Mini Pro series and kind of how to get it set up for live streaming. If you did like this how-to video, uh, leave us a comment down below and let us know. If there's any other how-to videos that you'd like to see, uh, once again, drop it in the comment section down below and we'll try to get to it. Other than that, remember, like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you on our next video.